Imagine waking up every single day, not just tired, but utterly exhausted. I mean, it's like you've been running a marathon in your sleep. You know, you push through your day with your body aching, your brain's all foggy, you know, you're struggling to remember even the simplest things. And yet, no one you talk to seems to understand what you're going through or have any answers that might help you feel better. So many people think it's just all in your head. But one thing I'm clear on is it's not all in your head and it could actually be chronic Lyme disease. So in the next few minutes, stick with me because I'm gonna be sharing with you the top five signs that you may have chronic Lyme disease. And not only will this help you have a better understanding of what's going on to you, but it's gonna help you get better. Stick around because recognizing all these symptoms could be the first step towards reclaiming your health and your life. Hey, this is Dr. Tom Moorcroft, and I'm gonna share with you the top five signs that you may have chronic Lyme disease. And it's really about understanding what you need to know and understanding those hidden symptoms. That way you're able to take charge of your health. You know, chronic Lyme disease is this complex and often misunderstood condition, and it really affects thousands upon thousands, if not tens of thousands of people worldwide. You know, the symptoms can be elusive, they often mimic other illnesses. It makes it exceptionally difficult to diagnose and treat. However, by paying close attention to your body and really understanding those key signs and symptoms, you can take control of your health and begin your healing journey. So the first sign is so common out there, persistent fatigue. You know, one of the most common signs of chronic Lyme disease, one of the key parts is it doesn't improve with rest. You know, and it's not just your usual tiredness or you work hard or you, you go do something a little extra and then you might need an extra couple hours of sleep or maybe one day to recover. It's like you do a couple hours of work and you're down and out for a couple of days or maybe even a week. It's that overwhelming exhaustion, you know, that makes even the simplest tasks feel impossible. So imagine, waking up every single morning, feeling as though you've run that marathon, you know, and no amount of sleep is gonna bring relief. I remember when I was sick, I, I really, I took on this moniker of called sleep when you're dead, right? Because if I slept four hours or I slept 14 hours, it didn't make a difference. I could sleep 14 hours for three weeks and I would still be exhausted. Or maybe I got that little glimpse of a little bit of energy and then all of a sudden I did like 90 minutes of something rather than 60 minutes and then I was down and out for the next couple of days. You know, it's so frustrating because it's that type of fatigue that's a direct result of your body constantly fighting that underlying infection caused by Borrelia burgdorferi, that bacterium that causes Lyme disease. You know, you've noticed that your energy levels are constantly low despite all those lifestyle changes. This could be a symptom of a deeper infection at play. So before we go on, I wanted to give you a couple of tips for managing this. And this is a good time to click that subscribe button and hit those bell notifications because some of these tips are things that are beyond the, the scope of this video, but we talk about them on our channel all the time. So if you're interested in learning and taking a deeper dive on these, that's the way to get the best free information that's gonna help you move in that direction of your healing. So let's see, let, things I did as I started with breathing and gentle restorative practices, I started with yoga. And the thing was, when I started, I could barely do it. It was a 90 minute practice. I was breathing and moving together for about 90 seconds. And then for the other 88 and a half minutes, I was breathing. I was just sitting there coming back into my body. That was a key turning point for me. It took months and months and months of patience to get the momentum, but it worked. You may find that instead of yoga, Tai Chi, prayer or meditation is something that you can add into your routine. So really, these are things that can help you manage your energy levels and they may be accessible when your body can't go out and run or go hiking or maybe mountain biking or whatever it is that you love to do. So really the idea is start where you are with what you've got and then promote that overall well-being without overtaxing your body. So our number two sign that you may have chronic Lyme disease is chronic pain, right? I was diagnosed with chronic fatigue and fibromyalgia syndrome. So I lived in fatigue all the time, lived in pain all the time. Now the interesting thing about the chronic pain from chronic Lyme disease is there's many facets. And the number one thing we know is that migratory joint pain is highly associated with Lyme disease. There's very few other things out there that can cause it. 
and your healthcare practitioner should be able to help you sort those out. Those things aren't so hard to figure out, right? But chronic Lyme disease can cause that pain to move all over your body. Now, from a research statistical perspective, it's that joint pain. But in my experience and the experience of so many of my patients, it's, it's even the muscle pain can move around your body. Sometimes it's migratory neuropathy or those numbness and tingling type feelings. But these kind of fall into that same category. You know, it's that pain that lingers on and it hurts deep, but then sometimes it moves. Now, some of the times in chronic Lyme, it doesn't move, right? So for me, I had the migratory pain, but another kind of pain I had was I had injuries in my knee, my hip and my right shoulder here from sports, right? So there were pre-existing things that were mostly better, but those were sort of the weak spots. So Lyme is opportunistic and oftentimes it'll go and find a home, so to speak, in those weak spots. And then the other pains will migrate. So you may have kind of like a couple of spots where it stays and a couple of spots where it's moving. If that's happening to you, think about chronic Lyme disease as a possibility, right? And the thing is, a lot of times there is no clear origin. So if I had injuries and then it went there, that makes sense, right? But it's like when you have no good explanation for pain, joint pain, even headaches, right? Knees, hips, and your neck. It's not your, like your typical aches and pains. I mean, these are pains that persist for weeks and months and even years. They increase in intensity, then they come down. But even when they come down, it doesn't fully go away. It's kind of that nagging pain that just doesn't stop. And this ongoing pain is often due to that kind of inflammation that's caused by the body's immune system that's going after Lyme disease. But Lyme is so good at hiding that your body is kind of just not ever getting that job fully done. Now, does this happen to everybody with Lyme? Absolutely not. But there's a good 20% of people who get Lyme where this is the common outcome. So we need to do something about that. And we need to kind of earlier diagnosis and or I should say earlier recognition earlier diagnosis, earlier effective treatment. But for those who've got this type of chronic pain from that chronic low level immune, you know, overactivity because of this chronic infection, this is the real physical symptoms that people deal with. So again, a couple of things you can think about doing holistic pain management. Some of the things are like anti-inflammatory diets, get some of the sugar and the carbs and especially that processed food and the colors and the dyes, all those toxins, get them out of your body. And then you can use herbal supplements that are known to treat, you know, chronic pain naturally, things like curcumin, right? And there's so many out there. The important part is starting with your diet. And one of the things I think is so important for chronic pain and chronic fatigue is, and just chronic Lyme in general, right, is to think about this and go, hey, what? It's not just the food I'm putting into my belly. That's our diet. Think about that mental diet. What are you looking at on social media? What are you watching on TV? You know, what are the things that you're listening to on a constant basis? Are you feeding yourself a healthy diet of mental and emotional stimulation as well as that physical stimulation? So that anti-inflammatory diet has to be body, mind, and spirit, not just the food you're putting in your mouth. And then remember, always consult with a qualified healthcare professional before you start any new treatment. And in fact, figure out which one's right. Because I've had so many people go spend so much time and money on all this bullshit supplements when if they had gone to see somebody first to figure out where to start, their pain would have been under control so much sooner. So reach out to someone like our practice, the practitioners that are part of my Lyme disease practitioner certification and mentorship program who dedicate themselves to not only learning about how Lyme affects your body, what symptoms to look for, and then how to treat it both with natural as well as prescription medicines, but all the other things that go towards healing your body and bringing down that fatigue and bringing down that inflammation. So sign number three is a near dear friend of mine. Cognitive difficulties, man, often we call this brain fog. And when I was sick with Lyme, I actually called it brain death. I mean, I was at the point where if you asked me to do three times two in my head, I couldn't do it. I actually had to write it down on paper. It was just whatever was misfiring, you know, in my brain just blocked me from being able to do some of that really simple stuff. And brain fog is another one of those key hallmarks of chronic Lyme disease. So you might find it hard to concentrate. You might struggle remembering even the simplest things. And even maybe you're, it just feels like you're in this constant haze, right? I remember the cognitive challenges that I ran into were like, sometimes I would just stare at a wall. 
and I wouldn't even know it. People come back and be, well, what have you been doing at work? And I'm like, oh, apparently nothing. <laughs> you know, I would forget the simplest things. I used to get done an eight hour work day in like five to six hours. I got that much done. But then when I got sick, I would be at work for like 14 hours and I wouldn't get like three hours worth of work done. So people will start to come back and you, you know, a lot of people when they experience brain fog, they're going to be incredibly frustrated. But one of the keys where if you're not picking up on it or the early signs is other people around you are starting to get frustrated with you and you forgetting things, right? So it's almost like you're 20 or 30 and you've got like early onset dementia, right? That's not normal, you know? And so you need to work up there to consider chronic Lyme disease. And I mean, this and for me and so many of the people that I work with, we're high achievers, right? We have high standards, whether it's professional, whether it's our family life and our relationships or even just personal and the things we do. We're high achievers and we want the best and the most. And those people tend to, you know, we want to have this really sharp mental clarity on our day to day life. And that's what we're used to. But when that starts to go away and there's no other good reason, think about chronic Lyme disease. And again, when you're thinking about brain fog from Lyme, this is really due to that inflammation of the brain and the nervous system. Now, there's a couple ways this happens, and a lot of people are worried about the spirochete that causes Lyme, that bacteria, Borrelia burgdorferi, or some of the other ones that are emerging now, kind of like nibbling and munching on your nervous system. Now, while that can happen, often what happens is you have inflammation in other parts of your body, and that inflammation leads to breakdown of the blood-brain barrier and problems in the nervous system when the inflammatory cascade, you know, everybody's so familiar with cytokines and cytokine storm now, those cytokines are getting into the brain and causing these problems. So a lot of times in chronic Lyme, the brain fog and the neurologic symptoms aren't necessarily due to infection of the nervous system. They're much more due to this just body-wide inflammation. And this is where we go back to diet. You know, if we improve our diet, then we save and protect and rebuild our blood brain barrier. But if we eat a crappy standard American diet, that's going to break that down. So one, it can help bring down pain. It can improve our fatigue levels, giving us more energy, and it can also help with our cognitive function. So some of the other things you can do to improve your cognitive function is to engage in activities that really stimulate your brain. You do puzzles and reading and learn new skills. Try new things. Do something that engages you, not just like mind numbing watching TV or scrolling on social. Watch videos like this where you can learn something more and then go learn more about it, right? The other part is like some of these taking a breaks, not a big deal, but don't just always be checked out. You know, oh, my brain is tired. Well, partly your brain needs to be worked in order to get there. Now, find a balance point, right? But if you're doing like three hours of TV and two hours of social and no hours of reading, maybe we just put in 15 minutes of reading. See where you're at. This is also the place where regular meditation or using hypnotic tracks, things that get you inward focus rather than outward focus can really help clear the mental fog by reducing stress and promoting relaxation. And part of this is, this is that mental diet. The more we take, we untax our body, right? The more we remove toxins and the negativity coming in, the more that our body is able to really be focused on getting parasympathetic, healing and clearing out the toxins in our brain. And one last really key tip, the glymphatic system is the name of the system that detoxifies the brain. It primarily works in deep, slow wave sleep, and it also works when we're very parasympathetic in a meditative hypnotic state. Our next sign that it could be chronic Lyme disease are certain types of sleep disturbances, right? So we know that that's part of the problem, but you can actually start to improve your sleep. You can actually start to improve your brain detoxification by taking time during the day to get parasympathetic and relaxed, and that will help you sleep even more deeply. So check those things out. Subscribe, like I said, to the channel because we're doing so much more education on those little tips and tricks that can help you become more relaxed. And search up some of the videos we already have out here. We have healing experiences that will help you get to this place. And as promised, sign number four that you may have chronic Lyme disease, or you should at least consider it, sleep disturbances. You know, the, how many people do I see? Like, it's like almost like half the people every single day in my practice, they're battling to really get good sleep. You know, sleep disturbances are such a common issue for those with chronic Lyme disease. 
You may find it difficult to fall asleep, to stay asleep. You might wake up multiple times, pass back out. Maybe you just sleep all night long and you're like expecting to wake up, but feeling great, but you don't. You wake up feeling unrested, right? Non-restorative sleep is something that's a key hallmark in chronic Lyme disease. Now, sleep is crucial for healing, right? And without it, the body struggles to repair itself. And this exacerbates all those other symptoms. Fatigue obviously gets worse if you're not sleeping well, but your cognitive function, your body-wide inflammation, and therefore muscle and joint pain get worse. So these are really critical factors that you need to think about. Sleep is key. Now we also know that Lyme disrupts sleep, right? So we have to work on it from a multiple, multi-pronged approach in order to help you get to sleep. Disruption in your sleep patterns could be due to a variety of factors, including that pain, the anxiety, or other neurologic symptoms that come up from chronic Lyme disease. And really, poor sleep quality not only leaves you feeling exhausted, but it can worsen all of your other symptoms, and it creates that vicious cycle, one after the other, getting worse and worse and worse. It's a feed-forward loop, positive feedback loop in a really negative way, right? So this is a place that we really need to focus in healing. So here today, we're talking about the signs that you might have chronic Lyme, but as we've been doing, a couple tips for better sleep. Really establish a great bedtime routine. This is limit the exposure to screens an hour or two before bed. If you have to look at them, put on some blue blockers. Consider some natural sleep aids like melatonin or chamomile tea. Look at something like, I have a product that I love using from Origins of Health called Sweet Dreams. It helps you get to sleep, helps you stay asleep. We really wanna work on improving our sleep quality. Other things, cool dark room, right? Your bed is for sleep. And if you're an adult, it's for sleep and sex. That's it, nothing else happens in bed. The TV is out there, the reading is out there, and really focus on going to sleep. But that bedtime routine where you calm your nervous system down, maybe you do some of that breathing that we talked about earlier to help you get into that parasympathetic state. One of the easiest things to do, inhale for four, hold your breath for four, exhale for four, hold your breath for four. That's called box breathing. Simple way to do it. There's a ton of different riffs on breathing that I talk about on the channel, but this is one of the simplest ones because you can remember it, right? Two in, hold for two, out for two, hold for two, in for three or four. Whatever that number you choose is, just count. One, two, three, four, or one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Work your way up to that four, five or six seconds, right? But just let it be natural and chill. That will help you become so parasympathetic and chill out so that you can get a really good night's sleep. Now, number five sign that you may have chronic Lyme disease, something that should make you consider it at least, mood changes. You know, these emotional ups and downs of being sick for a prolonged period of time where no one else had an answer for you. I was told I had depression, I had bipolar depression. You know that hypomania, like all the good doctors and lawyers do, they said. I was like, look, no, I feel like crap and nobody can tell me what's wrong with me. Of course I have mood changes, right? So that, you know, Lyme can directly through inflammation or being in your brain cause mood changes. It can promote autoimmune in, in brain inflammation through a different pathway, which can lead to mood changes. But then you're just sick and tired of everybody telling you it's in your head and they don't have any answers for you. It's like, well, you're crazy, but we don't have anything to help you with. You know, that stuff is infuriating. Well, I, I mean, I guess I do have a prescription pad and I can give you a whole bunch of Zoloft or Prozac, even though you were never depressed until you had that tick bite and that rash, and then we told you not to take the treatment. I mean, some of, it, some of this stuff is crazy, but Lyme, especially chronic Lyme, takes a toll on people's emotional well-being. Mood swings, anxiety, depression, even a bit of rage and irritability are really common. And it's really often makes it hard to have this positive outlook. You know, everybody's like, I'll try to be more positive. In fact, I just told you that a little while ago, get a positive diet, right? For the mental, emotional things. So maybe you are having a hard time having a positive outlook, but you can turn on YouTube, you can turn on music, you can listen to books, you can listen to meditations and get in a habit of being having positive stuff fed into you until your body feels better to the point where it can do it because your mind's always listening, right? Your subconscious mind in particular is always listening. So feed it something nourishing, right? Because the mood changes aren't just this reaction to dealing with chronic illness. They can be a symptom of the infection itself. But the beauty is if we start to 
eat, have that great diet of more positive things coming in, it will help our body start to heal and actually improve our immune function. In, well, and one of the things we can measure is improve heart rate variability. And then that says, hey, our immune system's working better. We have better resilience to stress, better resilience to these infections. And with that immune boost, we can actually fight off the infections more. So that positive diet that you're giving your mind, your body, and your heart are all the things that are gonna help you move to heal. So if you've been experiencing some of these symptoms, you know, like mood changes, it's important that you consider things like chronic Lyme disease as a possibility. There you have it, our top five symptoms that if you happen to have them or a friend or a loved one does, maybe you should be considering chronic Lyme disease. But now, what do we do if you recognize these symptoms? You know, if you recognize one or more of these symptoms in yourself, it's crucial to take action. Chronic Lyme disease is a serious condition that requires comprehensive medical care. This includes all the best of the sort of the Western model where we've got our diagnostics and on our tests, we've got our medications, but also a comprehensive natural integrative approach to medicine where we're including herbs, detoxification support, maybe even homeopathy. We're looking at the body, the mind and the spirit all as one. And we're giving you back the power of healing by stimulating and catalyzing your self healing mechanism but this is the crucial point. You need to find the right guide because the sooner you start addressing these symptoms, the greater your chance of full recovery is. And this is one of the reasons that I created the Lyme Disease Practitioner Certification and Mentorship Program, a community of practitioners who come together where I teach them all of the basics, all the middle of the ground stuff, and then all the advanced Lyme and co-infection diagnostic and treatment approaches. But then we also bring in all the other things that we've talked about here. This is important because now you have a place to go see. Anybody with that LDPC or Lyme Disease Practitioner Certification and Mentorship logo on their website, you know that they have the highest level of training of anyone else in the world because they've dedicated themselves to not just learning the basics and not just sort of getting along and not just willy nilly doing the advanced protocol, but understanding how all of those come together into one big treatment package that lets you heal. So that's so important. So be on the lookout for somebody with that LDPC logo on their website. Check out originsofhealth.com in our practitioner directory. I hope this video has helped you understand better some of the top symptoms that should make you consider chronic Lyme disease. And at Origins of Health, we believe in a holistic approach to healing, which is how we do it in our office. It's how we train our practitioners. And that's what I wanna share with you here. Our programs are dedicated to support your body, mind, and spirit, helping you to regain balance and health. And whether you're starting your journey or you've been struggling with Lyme for many years, we're here to help you every step of the way. And this is how I work in my office. This is how I train all the practitioners in the LDPC. And this is the information I wanna get out to you. This is so important that you understand these. If you have something, please reach out. We're here to help you. Thanks so much for joining me. If you love this kind of information, please subscribe, hit those bell notifications to be sure that you get the next video as soon as it drops. And please share this with someone you know who may need this. And again, it's not saying that everybody's got chronic Lyme, but so many people do, and it needs to be considered. And I hope that this video has helped you understand when that consideration should get a little bit higher on the list. Until next time, this is Dr. Tom. Here's to your health.